Greetings. Let's start uh, today's class. Uh, as you remember, in the previous lecture, uh, I talked about the time analysis of control system. And we uh, investigated the first order systems as a dynamic system. And we saw that how could we uh, find and calculate the response of first order system according to the uh, test input signals like a unit step, impulse and ramp signals. But today I'm going to talk about the second order systems. As you see here, this is a typical and a standard form of second order systems which is obtained from this closed loop system. In fact, this term is a transfer function of second order system. So, to analyze the second order system, we need to describe the place of the poles of this system. Actually, the roots of uh, this polynomial denominator of transfer function of second order system. Actually, with describing, uh, with finding the place of the poles of second order system, we can describe the behavior of such systems. In fact, we can say that the dynamic behavior of the second order system can be described in terms of two parameters, zeta and omega n, zeta and omega n. Let's investigate uh, the poles of second order system. For the first one, we suppose that the poles are complex conjugates on the imaginary axis. As you see here, we have two imaginary axes. Uh, roots of the uh, polynomial of denominator of the uh, transfer function. We suppose that if our poles are located in the imaginary axis, our response will be like that and will be undamped. As you see here, this is the response of the second order system if our poles locations uh, are like that. It means that our zeta is equal to zero. The second one is that if we suppose that our poles come complex conjugates, but lying in the left half of the S-plane, we have real and imaginary part for our poles. In this case, we can say that our response will be underdamped. Our response will be underdamped. It means that after transient, transient time, our response will reach to its final value. Will reach to its final value. Another one is that if we suppose that the poles coincide on the real axis. It means that we have only a real part for the poles of the system. In this case, the zeta is equal to 1. And our response do not have overshoot and is critically damped. The last one is overdamped case, which our poles are at distinct location on the real axis in the left half of the S-plane, like that. Again, in this case, our response will be like that. After some transient time, the response will reach to the final value. And in the overdamped case, our zeta uh, will be greater than 1. Okay, let's investigate the unit 
is the response of second order system. Now, we investigated the location of our poles for second order system and we saw that how changed our response according to the place of uh, in fact poles of the second order system. Now I'm going to talk about the unit step response of second order system. As you saw I define that the transfer function of second order system is like that. First of all, I would like to talk about the underdamped case. It means that our zeta is between 0 and 1. This omega d is damped natural frequency and uh, is obtained using this formula. Okay? As you remember, I said that R of S is our unit step function and Laplace transform of unit step function is equal to 1 by S. And also I said that for finding the output of a system in S domain, we can multiply the transfer function as you see here by input of the system in the S domain. It means that I can multiply the transfer function of second order system by 1 by S. It means that by Laplace transform of unit step function and find the output of my system like that. Now we taking inverse Laplace transform from this equation, I can find the response of the system in time domain. In the case of underdamped, it means that when my zeta is between 0 and 1, my response will be obtained from this formula and equation. Now, if I calculate the error signal, actually the error between the input and output of second order system in the case of underdamped, okay? How can we say that? Let's calculate. I calculated the, re the error signal here according to the response of the system in time domain. So, if you look at this equation, we find that if my t, if our time approach to infinity, I can say that my error signal will be equal to zero. It means that there is no error between input and output after transient time. After transient time, it means that if our t approach to infinity. In underdamped case, when time is going to infinity, the error signal is equal to zero. Okay, I, I found the response of the system like that, and we said that in the case of underdamped response, our zeta will be equal to zero. If I substitute the zero value into this equation, easily we can find that response of the system will be equal to one minus cosine of omega nt. And if you look at this equation, you will find that our response becomes undamped and oscillations continue uh, indefinitely because I have cosine of omega t in my equation. Okay, if we suppose that zeta is equal to 1, what happens? This, if we substitute the 1 into the output of the system, 
we can find that the C of S will be equal to this equation. And with taking inverse Laplace transform, we can find the output of the system, response of the system, like that. And this is critically damped case. The last one is overdamped case. We suppose that our output is like that. I multiply my transfer function with the input and find the C of S. Again, with taking inverse Laplace, we can find that the C of T in the overdamped over case is equal to this. Okay? Now, I plot and draw all of these four types of second order system and I want to show you that how changed our response with changing the zeta. As you see here, if my zeta is equal to zero, it means that my response will be undamped. The green one is my undamped signal. Will, the response will oscillate up to the infinity. If my response is the actually the zeta value of my response of my system is equal to 0 0.5 the blue one I will have overshoot after some times my response will reach to the unity the final value of response and if my zeta is greater and equal to 1 is greater than and equal to 1 it means that my response will be critical and overdamped as you see here I will not have overshoot and again after transient time my response will reach to its final value as I talked about the, uh, here for the uh, unit step response of second order system, I show you the transient time of system. So this transient time is so important for us for analyzing and studying the control systems. So this transient time and this transient response also have some uh, specifications. Let's talk about these specific specifications. The first one is delay time. The second one is rise time, peak time, settling time, and maximum overshoot. The first one is delay time. What is the delay time? Actually, what is the meaning of the delay time in transient response of second order system? As you know, this is a typical form of a second uh, response of second order system. This is the typical form of response of second order system. Delay time is the time required for the response to reach half the final value of the system. As you see here, this is my TD, delay time my response reached to the half of the final value. This duration is called delay time. Another one is rise time. The rise time is the time required for the response to rise from 10 to 90 percent or 0 to 100 percent of its final value. From here up to the 100 percent of its final value. This is the rise time. This is the rise time. Okay? 
which is obtained using this formula, pi minus beta divided by omega t, damped natural frequency. The third one is peak time. The peak time is the time required for the response to reach the first peak of the overshoot. This is the peak time, is the time that my response reaches to its first peak value, which is obtained with pi divided by omega d. Okay, the next one is settling time. We can say that the settling time is the time required for the response curve to reach and stay within a range about the final value of size specified by absolute percentage of final value. As you see here, this is our range. And we have also two different types of settling time. The first one is T of S uh, with the 2% criterion and the second one is with the 5% criterion. This criterion represents these size of our range. And we can say that in the case of 2% criterion, we can find T of S using 4 divided by zeta times omega n and in the case of 5% criterion we can find that T s is equal to 3 divided by zeta omega n. The last one is maximum overshoot. We can say that the maximum overshoot is the maximum peak value of the response curve measured from unity and is obtained using this formula. It means that the value of response in peak time minus the value of response in the infinity divided by value of response in the infinity times 10 per, um, 100 percent gives us the maximum overshoot. This is the maximum overshoot of a second order system. As you see here, the value of response in the infinity, the value of response in the infinity will be equal to 1. Okay? So, I can say that if I substitute 1 instead of C of infinity, I can find that maximum overshoot will be equal to value of response in the peak time minus y, which is equal to e to the power of minus sigma divided by omega d times p. Okay, let's give an example and talk about the, uh, these specifications that I have talked uh, about that in the second order system actually in the transient response of second order system. In this example, this is as you see this is a closed loop system and our system is second order. The example says that suppose that zeta is equal to 0.6 and omega n is equal to 5 radian per second. So we need to obtain the rise time, peak time, maximum overshoot and settling time in this system. So we saw that damped natural frequency is obtained using this formula. It means that omega d is equal to 4 and sigma is equal to zeta uh, times omega n which is equal to 3. The rise time is pi minus beta divided by omega d. For calculating the beta according to this figure 
as you see here, I can say that beta is equal to inverse tangent of omega d divided by sigma. Inverse, inverse tangent of omega d, this is the omega d as you see here, and this duration is sigma. So I can find that beta is equal to 0 0.93 radian. With substituting this value into this equation, I can find that rise time is equal to 0 0.55 seconds. Okay, for peak time, easily I can say that Tp is equal to pi divided by omega d, which is equal to 0 0.85. 785 seconds and for maximum overshoot we saw that the, the formula for maximum overshoot is like that it means that my MP will be equal to 0 0.095 and also I want to calculate the settling time in the case of 2% criterion and I can see that settling time in the case of 2% criterion is equal to 1.33 seconds and in the case of 5% criterion will be equal to 1 second. So during this uh, lecture I showed you how could we calculate the specifications values of res transient response of second order system. I think it's enough for today. Thank you for watching us and goodbye.